everyone, welcome to another video. We recently got our speed paint 2.0 mega set and after painting our bottle tops on our original speed paints, we decided to do the same thing with these ones. We wanted to try a slightly different method for priming the bottle top, so we started with a piece of cardboard with one inch holes punched out of them. And then instead of a nine inch pizza box, we used a 12 inch pizza box this time. And then we placed our stencil inside of it. We then loaded the stencil and pizza box with paint bottles, which was a little bit harder to do than the other method. After that, we cut the top of the pizza box off to make it easier to handle. We then went outside to spray prime the bottle tops, but quickly found that this method was not as good as our old method, as as soon as you went to move the pizza box, the bottles fell all over the place. So we decided to go back to our old method and just make it a little bit better. So while the new method did solve the issue of the paint rubbing off the side of the bottle tops, it did cause a new issue of getting paint where we didn't want it on the bottles. I'll link our original speed paint video and how we did the pizza box method from the beginning for you here. Our issue with the old method was that some of the paint rubbed off when the bottles were removed from the pizza box. So we decided to fix that by enlarging some of the holes and smoothing them out so that the paint wouldn't rub off when we removed the bottles from the pizza box after they were spray primed. As we were fixing and smoothing out the holes, we made sure to test it with one of the paint bottles to make sure that once they were primed, none of the paint would rub off as we were taking them out. Once we knew a hole was good, we would move on to the next one. Now we're ready to try out our new and improved pizza box. This was our initial method of loading the pizza box and we could fit 12 bottles in at the same time. After having all bottles in, we would close the pizza box up so that it was nice and sturdy and stable. Taking these out to spray prime them, it was really easy to do. We had no issues with any of the bottles tipping over. The box was easy to turn and we were happy we went back to this method even if we had to fix some of the holes. After having primed a set, we found an even easier way to load the box. We loaded it upside down and then closed it over like this. Now that all the bottle tops were primed, it was time to paint them. We did the same thing that we did in the original speed paint video, which was we used three drops of paint for each bottle top. We found that three drops of paint was plenty and we wanted to be consistent with each bottle top. We wanted to make sure we weren't using more on one bottle top than the other, and we wanted to make sure that we weren't using a heavier coat on one and a lighter coat on another, so that when we were comparing coats for how much coverage they had and how well they covered or how evenly they covered, that we were being equal, and that when we were looking at them on the shelves, we knew that each one only had one coat and that they had the same amount of paint on them. I specifically chose to do only one coat because I wanted to know exactly what one coat looked like. When I'm looking at my paints on my shelf, I wanted to know what the color looked like with only one coat, even if I was going to be doing more than one coat. That way I know exactly what color I'm choosing when I'm going to choose my colors. Bottle tops are painted, and I've got our reds here. Now, our first red is the Carmine Dragon, which, for the practical naming, they've named a brilliant pinkish red, which I see a little bit of a pinkish tinge to it. It's a really nice red. Um, it has good coverage. I think it you'll only ever need one coat. It was really smooth and even going on, so I really like this color. I think I'll get use of it when I need a red. Next up, we have our murder scene, which they have named a black purplish red. And I can definitely see the purple to it and even the black because it's a very dark color, which you could definitely lighten up with your speed paint medium. Um, it has good coverage. It was really smooth going on. Don't think you'll need more than one coat. So I'll probably get some use out of this for some darker color when I need them. Then next, we have our Slaughter Red, which was in the original Speed Paint set. So for their practical naming, they've called it a Deep Red. So this is kind of just like a real red. Um, it was very even going on. It's got really good coverage. I don't think 
you'll ever need a second coat with the original speed paints. I don't think I ever needed a second coat with it then. Um, I like this color a lot in general. Um, I'm a big fan of red. I don't get to use it enough, so I'm hoping I'll get a chance to use all these reds. Next up, we have our poppy red, which they have called a brilliant red. Now, I'm not exactly quite sure what brilliant means, but anyways, this is just a really nice red. I like it a lot for the color. It has good coverage. It was really smooth and even going on. So I'm hoping I get a lot of chances to use these. I'm gonna try and find lots of chances to use red. Now, our last red is the bright red, which the practical name is reddish orange. Now this is probably my least favorite of them. You can definitely see the orange to it. It has good coverage. It is pretty even, but I would say it's a, the least even going on of the others. And it, as I said, it's my least favorite of them just because it's more of an orangey red than the others. And that's my least favorite of them. First, we're gonna start with our periwinkle purple, which they've called a purplish blue. And I think it's definitely got quite a bit of blue in it, but it's still a really pretty color. Um, it has good coverage. It went on pretty evenly and smoothly. Um, I really like this one, so I'm excited to get to use it. I love pretty colors, so I'm going to find as many uses for these probably as possible. Next up, we've got our purple swarm, which they've called a vivid purple. Now, I'm not exactly sure what vivid means, as well as some of the other words they use in their practical naming. Um, but this is good coverage. It goes on evenly and smoothly. Um, so I really like this one. I think this one might be one of my favorite ones. So I'm super excited to paint with that. Next, we've got our moody mauve, which they've called a strong purple. Strong is another color word that I'm not exactly sure what it means. I'm not exactly sure what strong purple means, but has excellent coverage. I think you'll only ever need one coat. Um, was really even and smooth going on. I really like this one, so I'm super excited for that one as well. Definitely going to be finding uses for that one. Then we've got our Moonlight Coral, which is called a strong reddish purple. I think it's more just kind of like a purpley pink color. Now it has good coverage. I think it's a little bit less even than the last couple we've looked at but it's still really pretty and I like this one as well. And then last in this section, we have our familiar pink, which this to me is the most disappointing in the group. Now they've called this one a vivid pink for the practical naming and it actually came out as a little bit of kind of just like bright, but light pink at the same time. Like it doesn't have great coverage but you can see that it's trying to be a bright pink. So I think with a couple coats, it would come out as a nice color. So I am still have hope for this one. I'm looking forward to seeing what it'll look like with a few coats and hope that it'll turn out to be a nice color. But so far it came out kind of splotchy and uneven with one coat. So, so far I don't like it, but I'm hoping that with another coat or two, that, I'll, that I will like it. So that's it for this row. Next up, we've got our blues. So first we've got our Tyrian Navy, which they have called a blackish blue. So it's a very dark blue. Definitely see where they've got the blackish blue naming from. So it has really good coverage, went on evenly and smoothly. Definitely don't think you'll need more than one coat. It's definitely got a different tint blue to it than our other blues. You could definitely lighten it up with your speed paint medium. Um, I like this one. I think it's definitely going to be one of those ones that I use as what I call like one of my go away colors when I don't want something to stand out and one that I'll kind of use um, for kind of like cloaks and stuff like that. Next up we've got the Beowulf blue which they have called a dark purplish blue. Now I don't really see a ton of purple to it, maybe like a hint of it, um, but to me it's kind of like a, like kind of like a royal blue, just kind of like a, like 
not quite a navy, but just not quite a bright blue. Um, but it has good coverage. It went on evenly, pretty smooth. I don't think you'll need a second coat. Again, you could lighten it up if you wanted to with your speed paint medium. Um, but I like this one as a darker blue. It's, I think, different enough than your High Lord blue for a little bit of a darker blue. Um, so yeah, I like this one. Then you've got your Raging Sea, which they've called a deep greenish blue. This is a pretty nice turquoise sea blue. It's more on the greener side than your plasmatic bolt was from the original one. Um, has good coverage. It definitely covered well in one, one coat. Um, was pretty even, you can see. So I think this one's pretty nice. I like this one. Then next up, we've got our Caribbean Ocean, which for the practical naming, they've called a brilliant greenish blue. Now this one I think has a little more blue than green to it compared to the last one we looked at. But for a lighter color, it has pretty good coverage. Um, this is only one coat, but it covered pretty well. It's pretty even, so I was happy with that. I like this one as well. Um, so depending on if I want more of a blue or a green would depend if I was going for this over the Raging Sea. Next up we have our Magic Blue, which was also in the original set, which I used a lot, especially for my Ghost Minis. Um, I really liked it then. It has good coverage. It was really smooth and even. Um, this was one I really liked then. I still really like it now. Next up, we got our Tidal Wave, which they have called a light blue. Um, this one doesn't have as good coverage and is not as even. I mean, it could have just been my paint job, but yeah, it just wasn't as even or as smooth as some of the other ones. So, so far, I don't love this one as much. Now, sorry, going back to the Magic Blue for a second one, I forgot to say that they called this one the Vivid Blue. And then our final blue is the Royal Robes, which is they've called a brilliant blue. Now this is kind of just like a medium blue, but a different tone than like your magic blue, which has good coverage. It was really even and smooth. Um, I like this one a lot. So I like that it's an actual different tone of blue than your magic blue. So I'm happy with this one. I was looking forward to seeing what this one looked like and it didn't disappoint. We're moving on to our greens, and our first one up is our Burnt Moss. So our Burnt Moss is a blackish green gray for their practical naming, and it is definitely a dark green, gray, black. doesn't have a ton of color to it. It's just kind of like what I call one of my go-away colors. So something I would definitely use kind of when I don't want something to stand out. Um, it has decent coverage but is a little bit uneven in spots. So I would take more care to just make it just even on the first coat, but I like it for things where I don't want it to stand out a lot. Next, we have our Gunner Camo, which is a dark grayish green for their practical naming. And I'd agree with that. It's definitely like dark gray green. It has a little bit more color than the burnt moss does. Like it has a little bit more greeny to it, but it is excellent coverage, very even and smooth. Probably one of the most smooth ones I painted with out of the Speed Paint 2.0. Um, so I like this one a lot. Um, it's going to be another one of my kind of go away colors where I don't want something to stand out, but it'll probably get used a little bit more just because of how even it is. Then next up, we have our Orc Skin, which was in the original set. For their um, practical naming, they called it a deep green. Now this has a ton of color to it. So you can see it has a, like a lot of green pigment to it. Um, I didn't do my best paint job on this one, but it has excellent coverage. This is only one coat, so it covered very well. I don't think you'd need more than one. Um, uh, so yeah, I like this one a lot when I'm just going for just a straight green. This is probably one of my favorite greens. So 
definitely like this one. Then we've got our shamrock green, which they've called a vivid green for their practical naming. It's a little bit lighter than our orc skin, but still just has a ton of color to it, a little bit brighter than the orc skin, has good coverage, went on smoothly, evenly. So I like this one so far. I'm looking forward to trying it out in use because a lot of the lighter greens in some of the other lines didn't cover very well. Next up, we have our ghoul green, which they have called a brilliant green for their naming. Now this one is still more of a green, but just doesn't have quite as much brightness as the shamrock and the orc skin but it still has good coverage and went on pretty evenly and smoothly. Um, but I just don't like it as much for like how much color it has, but I think it'll still have lots of uses. It just doesn't have as much color. So just depending on what I'm looking for at the time. Next, we have our forest sprite, which they have called a yellowish green. So I definitely see the yellowy green kind of olive color. Um, it has good coverage, but is a little bit less even than some of the other than some of the others. Um, so this one I like a little bit less for sure than the other colors, but for kind of monster colors, definitely see it having its uses. Then we have our algae green, which they have called a light olive green. And this one is definitely a little bit more even than the forest sprite than the last one we looked at. Um, so I like this one a little bit more. It has more evenness to it going on, but still has really great coverage. So I like this one a little bit more. Then we have our Gilly Dew, which is a brilliant yellowish green. So definitely see the yellow green to it. Um, a good coverage, pretty even, but there's a couple spots where it was a little uneven, but that could have just been my paint job. Um, so I like this one a little bit more than the last two. And I can definitely see where it would be useful in some of those monster colors for sure. So I like this one okay. I'll see how much use I get out of it. Out of it, But I look forward to trying it out. Then we have our Charming Chartreuse, which they have called a greenish yellow. It has decent coverage, but is a little uneven, as you can see in some spots. Um, Definitely see the greenish yellow has a little bit of an olive tone to it as well, like a little bit of that brown color to it. This one is just not my favorite color in general, but I can see how it's going to have its uses. So we'll see how much use I get out of it. Next up, we have our Grim Black. And for their practical naming, it is black because that's just what it is. It's black. This one I actually like better than the original one. It was in the original line. Um, I just find it goes on a little bit more smoothly and has just a better coverage with one coat than the original. So since it's the only black, I like it when I need black. Next up, we have our Occultist Cloak, which they have called a blackish blue gray. And you can definitely see that it's kind of a black gray with a little tinge of blue. It has decent coverage. I would like it to be a little bit more even, but I still like the color. I can definitely see why they called it cloak for the regular naming, because it's definitely going to be a good cloak color or another one of those ones where I just don't want something to stand out. So I look forward to trying that out. Next up is our Ashen Stone, which they've called Light Gray, and that's definitely what it is. It's definitely a light gray with decent coverage. I could get a drop of a different color on it, so ignore that. Um, has good coverage. It's pretty even. It could be a little bit more even, but I definitely like it. It's going to be useful for when I'm looking for a light gray. 
Next up, we have our Battleship Gray, which is kind of like a light bluish gray. There's a little bit of a tinge of blue. It's almost like it's not light blue all the way throughout it. Like there's blue some places and gray some other places, which is kind of cool. But it's supposed to be a light bluish gray according to their practical naming. Um, but it has decent coverage. And I'm not sure if that blue gray effect is supposed to be there. So I don't know if I would consider it even or not. But I think it's cool. So I like it for that. So next up we've got our metallics. First up, we've got our Broadsword Silver. Now, the Metallics were my favorite. While the Silver went on really well, it kind of just looks a little bit of like a sparkly gray. It's kind of a little bit dull. It's not really like, doesn't seem like it's really metallic when you're painting with it. It just kind of looks like a little bit of a sparkly gray. So I don't love it but it went on smoothly and it covered well. So I'll give it that. Now the Hoplite Gold was very similar. It just kind of looks like it has a little bit of a sparkly gold kind of color to it, but it was smooth, it painted on well, so it has that bonus to it, but I don't really see a lot of benefit to it over any other kind of gold metallic. Now the Talus Bonds is a little bit different. I don't know if you can see. Okay, yeah, you can if I kind of bring it up closer. It kind of looks like it has silver flakes in it. The other ones just kind of look like they might have some silver sparkles in it. This one looks like it has like larger silver flakes in it. So this one is my least favorite. I mean, it still felt like it went on smoothly but it doesn't look great. So this is my least favorite of the three of them. So overall, I'm not a huge fan of what the metallics look like overall. Okay, so we've got our browns here, and the first one we're going to talk about is our dusk red. Now, its practical name is pale purplish red, but I personally think it looks brown, which is why it's in with the browns. Now, it has really good coverage. It went on smoothly. I think you'll only ever need one coat. Now, I like this. I think you always will need lots of browns. I mean, I see a tiny hint of a red or purple in it, but like, really, I think it's a brown with a tiny hint of red or purple. Next up, we have our satchel brown which the practical name is dark reddish brown and to me it's kind of like a good leather color brown there might be a hint of red to it but to me it looks like a uh, kind of like a plain brown it has good coverage these are all one coat so i think that's mostly all you'll ever need it's smooth it went on pretty evenly so i like this one next up is our ruddy fur which they call a deep reddish brown now this one i definitely see more of the reddish in it and a little bit more of an orange it has good coverage but is a little bit less even than some of the others um so i still like this one though because just need a lot of different browns I find so I still like it next we have our noble skin which they have called a dark brown for the practical naming which I agree with I see a little bit like kind of of a little bit kind of like a dark gray kind of black tint to it but it has really good coverage, went on smoothly, is very even. So I'm really excited to use this one. It looks like a really nice color. Next is our Goddess Glow, which they've called a light purplish red. I definitely see the red in this one. Um, it has okay coverage, not as good as some of the others. I can definitely see when you might need a second coat. And it's not quite as even 
Um, so I like this one. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like with a second coat to even it out a little bit more. It's hard to really tell how much I like them until I've gotten a chance to use them more on some mini. So far, all I've really painted is bottle tops. Then we've got our warrior skin, which they've called a light reddish brown. I see a touch of red to it, but I think it's just a nice light brown. It has decent coverage. I wish it was just a little bit more even going on, um, but I like this. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Next is our fire drake, which they've called a brownish orange. Um, I think this is just a very nice brown. It's very even, very smooth going on. One coat. Um, we've painted a couple minis with this so far, or used it on a couple minis, not the whole mini. Um, and this has come in handy a lot on those minis. And we've liked it so far. Next up, we've got our brownish decay, which they have called a strong yellowish brown. This one I see quite a bit of kind of like an olive color to it. It's kind of got a yellowy brown color to it. I can definitely see it coming in handy in like a monstery color. Um, it has good coverage. Definitely think one coat is going to be enough most of the time. It was pretty even and smooth going on. Um, it's not my favorite color when it comes to colors, but it's pretty nice as a paint color for monsters. And then our final one in this section is our desolate brown, which they've color called olive for the practical naming. And I can see that too. It's kind of a greenish brown, has good coverage. It's pretty even. Wish it was a little bit more even. Um, again, it's just not my favorite color in general, but it's not bad. So I can definitely see it coming in handy. Okay, we've got our last section of colors here. And first up, we've got our maize yellow, which for the practical naming is vivid yellow. And this is just a very nice yellow. It went on smoothly. It has nice even coverage. I like this a lot when I'm just going to need a yellow. Next up, we've got our Ancient Honey, which they've just named yellow. Now, I see a little bit more of an orange to this one, to it. Um, it still has good coverage. It's pretty even. Um, so I like this one a little bit less than the other one, just because of the orange tinge to it. I think it's going to be just a little bit less useful to me, but others might feel differently about that one. Next up, we've got our Nuclear Sunrise, which they've named Vivid Orange for the practical naming. Now, it kind of looks like a little bit of a burnt light orange. Um, it doesn't have as good coverage as some of the other ones, so I'd be interested to see what it looks like with a second coat. So it's a little bit uneven, a little bit just not as great coverage as some of the others. Um, so this one so far isn't my favorite, but we'll see once I've had a chance to use it more. Next up, we've got our Aged Hide, which they have named Pale Yellowish Pink. And so far, I like this one. It has decent coverage. It's a little bit uneven, but this was just a quick paint job, so that could just be because of that. Um, so it's a good, um, good color. Definitely going to come in handy, I think. Next up, we've got our Peachy Flesh, which they've named Light Yellowish Pink kind of a skin tone. It has decent coverage for the lightness it is. Um, I do think it could need a second coat depending on what you're painting and how dark you want it to be and how much coverage you want. But overall, I'm pretty happy with having another skin tone, so I'm excited about this one. Next up, we've got our Bony Matter, which they've titled a Pale Brown. Now I see this as kind of like a pale brown, but also kind of like a mix with a little bit of gray to it, like a pale brown gray. 
Um, it has decent coverage. It went on pretty e evenly and smoothly. Um, so I definitely see this one coming in handy and I like this one so far. I'm looking forward to trying it out more. And then last up in this one is the Ochre Clay, which they've titled a strong greenish yellow. Definitely see the greenish yellow in it. Also see a little bit of kind of like a brown to it. Um, it has good coverage. One coat I think is all you'll need. Um, I didn't do my best paint job on this, so I think it would definitely be a little more even if you just took a little bit more time to, in your painting. Um, I don't overall love the color in general, but I can see it coming in handy when you're painting your minis. Thanks for watching our video where I tested the new Army Painter Speed Paints and let you know what I thought of the colors. I'm really looking forward to using the new speed paints on my minis. I hope you found this video helpful. Let us know in the comments which colors you're looking forward to using. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.